Hi, my name is Kit Franson and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. Today we are going to discuss utilization schedules in Trace 700. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to create and apply utilization schedules as well as understand how date types are used in Trace calculations. We will then discuss where these schedules fit in your model and how they can change your results. And we'll do this by examining the impact of using conservative utilization schedules versus less conservative schedules. First of all, what are utilization schedules? Utilization schedules tell Trace how the lights, people, miscellaneous equipment, ventilation, and many other important parameters are used in the building. Utilization schedules are important because they track operation of a building which can drastically impact energy performance. This type of schedule allows you to designate the percentage of full load capacity that loads or equipment will use during a specified period. So let's take a look at an example here. On the left, we have an office building with a standard operation of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. On the right, we have a fitness center that is open 24-7. So if we look at a 24-hour day, if a building is occupied from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., such as on the left, but unoccupied for the other hours, the loads and energy consumption may be less compared to a building that is occupied for all 24 hours out of a day, such as on the right. So in order to be accurate in our energy model, we need to track and measure this key data. So how do we access and create utilization schedules? Well, let's take a look into the program here. We first need to head into the library and then into the schedules library. First, under Schedule Type, make sure Utilization is selected. From here, you can also select a multitude of other different types of schedules that come with the program. As an example, we have thermostat schedules or equipment operation schedules. Beneath that is a list of all available utilization schedules within the program. These could be either custom schedules that you as the user have built or standard schedules that have come with Trace. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select a standard schedule, which is the infiltration for manufacturing. Beneath that, you have the simulation type, which is either in reduced year or full year. Full year schedules are different than reduced year schedules in that they allow you to, to define unique Monday through Friday day types rather than define just one single weekday day type. Full year schedules may not be necessary for full year simulations if the weekday schedules do not vary throughout the week. So as an example, if you have a typical office building, you know, from 8 to 5 operation, well, you don't need to use a full year because they're the same every single weekday, so you can just select the reduced year simulation type. Below this section, you have comments, so you can add additional descriptions if necessary. And in the bottom left, you'll see definitions, which include day types, which I'll touch on in a few minutes. Definitions are used to set schedules on an hourly basis for each month. So you can explore the details of the definition by looking in the center section here, which displays a table with start time, end time, and a percentage. So each definition has its own custom schedule, um, be it from midnight to midnight 100% for Saturday, or cooling design to weekday 100%, 0, and 100%. So below, the reset and lockout tables are an advanced topic and will not be covered in this video. However, more information on reset and lockout tables can be found in the user's manual or you can contact the CDS Support Center for more information. So now that we have a grasp on the inputs required to create a schedule, let's talk about day types in a little bit more detail. So as you can see in the slide here, each day type represents a day which helps determine either equipment size or determines hourly loads which are enabled to calculate energy consumption for your building. So first, to determine peak loads for sizing cooling coils, design schedules are used in conjunction with cooling design weather. Next, to determine hourly loads for energy analysis, we'll look at that center block there with weekday through Sunday day types being used. Lastly, to determine peak loads for sizing heating coils, the heating design schedules are used in conjunction with the winter heating design dry bulb temperature. Since we've got a good grasp on day types and weather, now let's jump into the schedule library so we can talk about creating a custom schedule. If we want to customize schedules for a project, we'll have to either copy a current schedule or create a new one as standard library members in Trace 700 can't be edited. 
So right now I've brought up a standard library member that comes with Trace, and it's the People Hospital Schedule. So if I try to adjust it from 80% to, let's say, 100% from midnight to midnight, it won't let me do it. So what we're going to end up doing here is creating a new schedule. So if we hit New here, you must make sure that every single hour of the year would be defined for all the different day types. Otherwise, if you tried to save the schedule, Trace 700 will give you an error stating that all day types must be defined. So let's say we're creating another hospital schedule for a building that we're um, designing in La Crosse. So first of all, we have to give it a name. So if we'll do people-hospital La Crosse 1. And so what we're going to need to do before we save it is create definitions for the schedule. So immediately when you hit new definition, it gives you the cooling design to Sunday. So that's saying that from the cooling design day type all the way through the Sunday day type, so all those day types will have the same exact definition or schedule. So let's say we want people to be inside of this building 100% of the time, or at least that's what pre is prescribed. So we select the start time is midnight and the end time is midnight and plug in 100% um, for the value there. So we can't save it yet, though, because we're missing one day type here. We're missing the heating design day type. So this is accounting for the sizing of your heating coils. So typically, when you're doing a load calculation and sizing your heating coils, you do not want to account for any internal loading. So in order to do that, um, we'll, we'll create the same uh, start time and end time as before, midnight to midnight, but we do not want to account for the load, so we're going to plug in 0%. And so that means that when we do the load calc, we're not accounting for that extra heat, so we're... To, in order to not reduce the size of the heating coil. Once we're done here, we can hit save, and we can go back into the program and select this, this schedule. So now that we have an understanding of how to create schedules, um, let's take it and understand it and see how it impacts your load and energy analysis with different ways to build the schedule. So how does this newly created hospital schedule impact your energy model? Let's take a quick look at how Trace performs its analysis to generate loads on design days as well as analysis days. There are three phases for the load calculations, load, design, and system simulation. During the load phase, Trace will take building information, which is envelope and internal loads, combined with the weather to calculate peak loads. This phase uses design weather and design scheduled day types. During the design phase of the simulation, which is designing the parameters of your HVAC systems, Trace will calculate additional loads, such as ventilation and fan heat, and also uses design weather along with the design schedule day types. Trace 700 will then take that information and pass it on to the system simulation, which determines hourly loads and air flows for the HVAC system using the day types of design, weekday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let's talk about how this all works together. When the program runs the system simulation, the design day calculated data from the system simulation rolls into the weekday, which then carries through to Monday. So why does the design day carry over into the other day types? The design day is a starting point for the building loads to come into a thermal equilibrium to provide a more accurate simulation. Additionally, after the Sunday day type, you'll notice that Monday is split out from the weekday day type. This is because Monday helps better analyze pull-up or pull-down loads based on the building demand during the weekend. The Monday calculation utilizes the weekday schedule to calculate these loads. So due to the carryover design calculated data into the weekday schedules, the design day schedule and loads will have more of an impact on reduced year simulation than a full year simulation, as the design day only carries over into one day with a full year simulation as compared to carrying over into the weekday and the weekday being multiplied several times to simulate a month with a reduced year simulation. So clearly you can see that schedules need to be designed appropriately in order to provide a proper simulation. Trace 700 typically contains less conservative design schedules, which may lead to higher energy consumption, but it really depends on many factors inputted into the model. So let's take a look at this graph here that shows three different cooling design schedules that a user might create. For the less conservative schedule, shown as the bottom curve, you will typically see that the cooling design schedule is the same as the weekday schedule. So if we pull up a screenshot of Trace, you'll notice that the first definition states cooling design to Sunday. We are basically saying that the cooling design schedule is the same as the weekday, Saturday, and Sunday schedules. Furthermore, we're basically saying that the load schedule is the same as the energy schedule. 
This may cause issues with undersizing coils because the load or equipment operation will change with each hour, which can then change the time of coil peak for the building. The curve above this schedule is the less conservative schedule with the safety factor. This looks identical to the less conservative schedule. However, you'll notice that I've inputted a 10% safety factor on top of this definition. This would be typical if you're concerned about undersizing your coils. The last schedule I want to show you is the conservative schedule, which is the top line. If you have the conservative design schedule, you might be oversizing your coils. Furthermore, peak coil size impacts the part load operation of the equipment, which may increase or decrease overall energy consumption. So you must be cautious when either creating a custom schedule or selecting a schedule from the library. So to hit home on appropriate scheduling, let's take a look at an example of an office building that I created from the new file wizard. So this building is a single story office building that has 20% glass on its envelope and it's 10,000 square feet with a single zone constant volume system that has no fan cycling and uh, drift points. To show the impact of scheduling internal and external loads, I have created a file containing four alternatives using reduced year weather. The first alternative contains a definition of cooling design through Sunday for all internal and miscellaneous loads, which is typical of standard Tray 700 utilization schedules. The second alternative has an adjusted cooling design of 100% for just the people loads. The third alternative has an adjusted cooling design schedule of 100% for just the lighting loads, and the last alternative has an adjusted cooling design of 100% for ventilation. You can see in the output that the most conservative energy analysis is alternative one and alternative four, but there's barely any difference in peak tonnage between the alternatives. So now let's take a look in a little bit more detail in each energy consuming section. Comparing alt one to alt two and three, the space heating energy is higher for alternative one because there are more loads in the space for alternative two and three during the design calculation. You may be wondering why alternative two space cooling is so low. Well, that's because since it's 100% occupancy, design never goes into drift mode, which means lower loads during weekday. Comparing alt one to alt four, space heating energy is higher for alt four because ventilation is coming in during unoccupied hours during design. The point of this exercise is to show that since the loads are carried from the cooling design day type to the weekday through Sunday day types, there can be quite a large difference in your energy model results. However, it also doesn't just depend on the schedules either, as the control options for the building will also drastically impact your load and energy calculations. Furthermore, there can be definite trade-offs in your energy model in regards to scheduling. There are many different ways to properly schedule through separating load design and energy analysis, or even incorporating a safety factor for cooling design, but this is all up to the designer and the model they are trying to represent. Here are a list of some additional resources that may be useful when you're creating or customizing any sort of schedule. You can look at the Trace 700 user's manual or use the Trace Online F1 help. And finally, here are some ways to contact us. Thank you for your time and good luck energy modeling.